attitude so let us look at the questions from sexually transmitted infection so if you look at this question I told you already there are five questions which were asked. A person came with a painless ulcer over the genitalia with associated painless inguinal lymphadenopathy. Whenever ulcer and lymphadenopathy both are painless, that is basically genital ulcers, then the only diagnosis which you must think about is CFLS. Okay, CFLS. This is the diagnosis. So, microscopy which can identify the causative organism of the disease among the following is yes, the causative organism in the case of syphilis is treponema pallidum. And if you remember, it is a spirochete and it cannot be easily observed under a microscope. So, we need a special microscope and it is called as a dark field microscope so the answer here is option a dark field microscope okay if uh, so i will just uh, explain the question and tell the answer if you are having any queries please feel free to put it in the chat section or in the comment section uh, and i will look at them and i will try to answer them later on okay so because i just want to continue the flow i am uh, going to cover all the questions at the first go causative organism for the granuloma inguinal so now this is very very important thing we have discussed this n number of times in our videos also so granuloma inguinal the other name for this disease is donovanosis donovanosis or this is in fact also called as granuloma granuloma venereum please make it a point that you will not get confused this condition with lymphogranuloma venereum okay lymphogranuloma venereum is a different genital ulcer disease and the causative organism for that is chlamydia trachomatis chlamydia trachomatis and the question is asking us about granuloma inguinal so the answer here becomes option d klebsiella klebsiella granulomatis is the name of the organism which is responsible for causing donovanosis it was previously called as calimatobacterium granulomatis that was the other name okay so this is very very important for you to identify and uh, remember the other names also so the other names of donovanosis are it is also called as granuloma inguinal or it is also called as granuloma venerum very very important for you to remember this and uh, i will also put the option uh, you know the uh, videos which i have made earlier i will link that in the i card and also i have put this in the description so regarding donor vanosis donor van bodies you can check out all the related uh, video uh, uh, um, concepts in this uh, link i will put it in the description so just search in the description uh, just adjacent to donor vanosis or i will put that link even in the i card and also in the first comment so lady came with vaginal discharge whiff test is positive clue cells are seen oh my god so many clues are given so with all these clues given in the question the diagnosis is bacterial vaginosis bacterial vaginosis so i hope it's not at all difficult bacterial vaginosis is the diagnosis and the answer here is metronidazole the answer here is metronidazole okay so i have uh, made a video about this i will put the link in the i card so here this question few students had some difficulty 26 year old female came with chief complaints of vaginal discharge and with lower abdominal pain and cervical tenderness so by a uh, few students told me that there was option uh, mentioning it as green kit okay so they have marked it because they thought it was vaginal discharge but please remember if lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain is mentioned then you should think in terms of pelvic inflammatory disease and also you can see cervical tenderness is also mentioned so for pelvic inflammatory disease we have to give kit number six kit number six which is 
yellow kit which is yellow kit okay very very important so this is the uh, chart and here you can see this is kit number six which is used for lower abdominal pain and you can see here the patient the female she can even have the vaginal discharge and also you can see cervical motion tenderness these are the points which are mentioned so in this case we are going to give the person with kit number six so this is a repeat question we can say a one-liner kind of a question condyloma accumulator so very very warm welcome anantamon so condyloma accumulator it is caused by it is the other name for this is actually anogenital warts so condyloma accumulator is nothing but anogenital warts and yes hpv human papilloma virus in fact there are so many types 6 and 11 are associated with anogenital warts very very important for you to remember there is uh, there is one more thing which you must remember which is caused by treponema pallidum and that condition is seen in secondary syphilis it is called as condyloma lata condyloma lata which is noted in secondary syphilis secondary syphilis okay so this could be one very important confuser and this question i hope all of you might have done it uh, correct person went for trekking mountain had bee sting later the person developed edema redness the antibody responsible among the following is so uh, this picture is looking like a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction type 1 hypersensitivity reaction and you all know that type 1 hypersensitivity reaction the examples are anaphylaxis asthma and uh, the antibody which is associated is IgE the answer here is option number B so this question a patient was bought with uh, uh, complaints by the, their relatives to the medicine of PD with the complaints of diarrhea dermatitis and mental retardation his staple diet consisted of maize which of the following is the most probable diagnosis so this is the question and of course the answer is going to be option c pellagra you all know pellagra is associated with four d's diarrhea dermatitis the other d is dementia of course they can mention some kind of cns manifestation also and the most important other clue which they have given is that the staple diet is maize which is rich in leucine and this leucine will somehow reduce the absorption of the niacin because of which the formation of this vitamin b3 will be hampered which is going to produce this condition which is called as pellagra okay so the answer here is option c pellagra a person with a history of surgery has a scar so there is a history of surgery there is a history of scar and the next point is very important this scar is bounded to the suture line so wherever sutures were made only over those areas this, this scar is produced and it is a raised scar so what kind of a scar is it so the answer here is going to be hypertrophic scar and please remember the very important differential for this is keloid but please remember that in keloids the scar need not be born to the suture line it will extend it will encroach onto the normal skin so it will encroach to the adjacent normal skin and one more point is keloids can be produced spontaneously without any history of trauma or surgery okay so uh, with these two points not in favor of keloid the answer is going to be hypertrophic scar and now this question if you look at the images what you are able to see is you are able to see some scaling is present some well-defined erythematous scaly plaques and papules and plaques are present mainly over the lumbar area and also you are able to see over the extensor that is knees okay and you are being also given one more clue that this patient also is developing arthritis okay arthritis so with all these clues you are already spoon fed that the diagnosis is psoriasis and please remember out of the given options it is methotrexate it is methotrexate which is the drug of choice in the case of patients having psoriasis along with the joint involvement along with the joint involvement so the answer is going to be methotrexate here methotrexate here 
and you can also check out my video which I made for the treatment options in psoriasis in the comment and also in the description and uh, this is the picture which was given and you have to say which is not seen in this condition and in the picture what was mentioned is some violaceous violaceous blocks which are present over the flexor flexor wrist area so the diagnosis in this case is going to be lichen planus so as you can see the most important topic in fmg exam is one is sexually transmitted disease and the other one is papillosquamous disorder you can see one question from psoriasis and the other question from lichen planus came and you need to identify which of this is not associated with lichen planus so we can try seen associated with lichen planus sawtooth reteriges are seen civet bodies colloid bodies are seen in lichen planus but option d munros micro abscesses no they are not associated with lichen planus but they are seen in psoriasis munros micro abscess and if you remember spongiform pustules of kogoch both are associated with psoriasis and these are basically collection of the neutrophils in stratum corneum and in stratum spinosum respectively munros micro abscess and spongiform pustules of kogoch i have explained uh, the histopathology of lichen planus very detailed way in this video the link I will put it in the i card and also you can check it in the description also in the first comment so now this question is very interesting patient was on treatment with 13 cis retinoic acid actually in my previous videos i have told that this could be a potential question in the future and it came in this exam so 13 cis retinoic acid is nothing but it is other name for isotretinoin it is other name for isotretinoin and you all know that the most important side effect of this isotretinoin is it is very notorious in producing teratogenicity that is the reason why there is a very stringent rules by the countries uh, uh, in the usage of this isotretinoin and uh, I have explained this in detail in this video at 15 minutes and 18 seconds and also this video is entirely about the contraception period in isotretinoin. You can check these in the links in the description also in the comment and this question uh, i can say it is very very simple and uh, one second let me yes so patient presented with hypopigmented macules associated with scaling over the back and upper trunk and KOH mount short spaghetti and meatball appearance what could be the causative agent so this is very 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 straightforward question so first you need to uh, uh, identify what is the diagnosis so with all these clues hyperpigmented macules scaling upper trunk KOH showing spaghetti meatball the diagnosis which you are correctly thinking right now is pityriasis versicolor pityriasis versicolor the causative agent is malassezia malassezia globosa and also even malassezia furfur so option c is the diagnosis in this case very very important repeated question most probably you might have answered this right and this plant this plant is called as congress grass so yeah congress this is not about congress party or anything okay but this is called as congress grass this is also called as carrot grass and this is uh, in fact also called as scourge scourge of india so it congress is not the scourge of india congress grass is the scourge of india okay so all these are the synonyms for this plant and Scientifically, this is called as Parthenium hysterophorus. This is called as Parthenium hysterophorus. Very, very notorious in producing one very important condition which is called as airborne contact dermatitis. A, B, C, D is not anybody can dance. It is airborne contact dermatitis. And the investigation of choice in this condition is it is patch test. Very, very important. These questions will be again and again repeated in the NEET exam and in the INSET, FMG. So, all you need to do is focus on the very, very repeated topics. That is the most important learning which you should get from uh, uh, this exam, FMG. The other aspirants also, INSET and FMG uh, aspirants as well. So, in the viral infections, this is the question. A child has fever, runny nose, 
headache uh, rash as shown in the image and the disease was caused by oh sorry this is actually so uh, this is not secondary syphilis dna virus this is ss dna virus so my uh, ppt has uh, auto correcting mode so it corrected to secondary syphilis so it is single stranded dna it is single stranded dna so the causative agent i hope you all might have uh, guessed by uh, this time so it is it is fifth disease the name uh, it is fifth disease which is also called as erythema infectiosum Infectiosum, okay. So it is not second syphilis. Please uh, pardon me for this, okay. And yes, uh, this appearance is very very important. It is called as slapped cheek appearance. This is called a slapped cheek appearance. So one very uh, easy way to remember this is you can slap on any person's cheek with five fingers, isn't it? So it is fifth disease, okay. It is fifth disease. And you can check out the explanation for this uh, given extensively in this video. Uh, I will put that link in the description also in the comment. So the next question is 23 year old female came to OPD with a malar rash. So that is first clue. First of all, you should identify that it is a female and on further investigation, she was positive for anti Smith auto antibodies. So the diagnosis is very, very simple. It is systemic lupus erythematosus. It is systemic lupus erythematosus so you can check out all the uh, important questions uh, related to systemic lupus erythematosus being discussed in uh, this video okay and now this question is child presents with a rash on the lower limb okay he also complains of some abdominal pain and joint pain presence of hematuria is also noted platelet count is not reduced so there is no thrombocytopenia and the uh, answer for this question is yes it is Hanoxonlin popra Hanoxonlin popra very very important uh, you know skin related pathology related pediatrics related topic so we can say uh, one more thing about this particular fmg exam that the examiner is very very fond of integration of the uh, you know different subjects so do not read subjects uh, uh, div dividing them with the, some walls in between so always try to correlate each and every topic which you are reading with other subjects so what could be the examiner or uh, like mixing of the other subject this is what your mindset should be you should think like the examiner while you are reading then what you can do is you can easily you know guess what the examiner might ask in the next exam so one more thing which you must remember is the topics which are repeated are going to be the topics which will be repeated in the future also i hope you know this uh, important principle of 80 20 it is called as pareto's principle it is called as pareto's principle so i will explain about this at the end just remember this is very important and what is this i will explain uh, after all the questions are completed so that the students will not find it uh, distracting and finally this question it's not completely a dermatology related question but yes i included this here because we get to see this in leprosy we get to see this in the patients who have hansen's disease so basically here uh, you are able to see that the fourth and uh, the little finger uh, they are having some hyper extension at the metacarpophalangeal joints and hyper flexion at the interphalangeal joints. So whenever you get to see this, you should remember that there is ulnar nerve involvement, only ulnar nerve involvement. Why? Because if there is a median nerve involvement, then what will happen? Even the other fingers also will show this same feature that is hyper extension at the metacarpophalangeal joints and hyper flexion at the interphalangeal joints so here the answer is allar claw hand 